Hi, I'm Dane from Dane's Kitchen and welcome to my home kitchen. Today I'm making a really special recipe because it was my first recipe that went viral on TikTok. And that's my mum's famous crispy crumb chicken that's made with homemade breadcrumbs. Because you all loved this recipe so much, I had to include it in my cookbook garlic, olive oil, and everything else. It's also featured on the back of the book. Now what makes this crispy crumb chicken so special are those homemade breadcrumbs. And they are actually so easy to make because you only need a few ingredients, including a whole bunch of fresh parsley, some fresh rosemary, and a loaf of stale white bread. And the best thing when making these breadcrumbs is to do it in batches because you want quite a chunky texture. And that just allows it to have those crouton-like bites in there that are just so delicious. Now, I bought this sandwich loaf yesterday, so it wasn't quite stale, it was very fresh. And the best way to make it a little bit dry is to lay it out on a cooling rack the night before, and then you'll get that really like stale-like texture, which is what we're looking for when we're making breadcrumbs. If your bread is too fresh, it's gonna have too much moisture in it, and it's just not gonna work. It's gonna be a soggy mess when it hits the pan. Then I'm gonna get the parsley. You don't need the stalks, but there's no need to pick all those leaves off the stalks. And just give it a really rough chop. And because we're making these breadcrumbs in batches, use about a third of the parsley. And then just a little bit of rosemary. Rosemary is quite an overpowering herb in terms of taste. So you don't want too much. I'd say about a stalk per batch. So we're gonna do it in thirds. And look how easy that is. And now we're gonna blend it up and that is all you need for these homemade breadcrumbs. You don't want that fine texture that you will find in pre-bought breadcrumbs. Cause this is what makes it so special. These are looking really good to me. And you'll see as well that by using all of that fresh parsley, your breadcrumbs actually come out this beautiful, unique green color. And that's how easy it is to make those breadcrumbs. And just look at that unique green color. It's like nothing you would ever see for pre-bought breadcrumbs in the grocery store. And oh, they are just so good. They are actually so versatile as well. As I said, I've got a whole chapter on crumbs in my book. And I have shown you about eight or 10 different ways in how you can use these breadcrumbs. We now need to make the egg wash to crumb that chicken with. And my mum and I have a little secret with our egg wash. And it obviously wouldn't be a Dane's Kitchen recipe without it, but we put garlic in our egg wash. And what that does is it adds just a really subtle garlicky flavor with every bite of that crumb chicken. Probably about six eggs we need today. So a fair bit of eggs. That's because I'm crumbing about one and a half kilos of chicken. I always love to make this recipe in a large batch or in a huge bulk, because what I do is I individually wrap each piece of chicken, put it in the freezer, and then when I wanna eat it in a few weeks time, I just defrost it and then fry it up. I'm just gonna do a quick whisk there. And now I'm gonna add about four cloves of crushed garlic. You don't need too much garlic. You don't want it to be overpowering. You just want it to be that really subtle note of garlic throughout. I always have a personal preference to crushed garlic. Okay, so we've got all that beautiful garlic in there. Now I'm just gonna keep whisking. All right, that's looking good. And I'm gonna set that to the side. And the last thing we need to do for our crumbing station is just to get a little bit of flour that I'm gonna season with some salt and pepper. Now, every time I share this recipe online, I get really criticized for the lack of seasoning within it. But I'm telling you now, with that rosemary, parsley, the garlic, the salt and pepper in the flour, you really don't need much more. This is one of those dishes where simplicity is at its finest. And that is our crumbing station prepared. We have our flour that's seasoned with salt and pepper, the egg wash with some garlic and those delicious homemade breadcrumbs. Now we just need to prepare the chicken. I am a chicken thigh girl through and through, but this is one of those rare times that I actually use chicken breast. Chicken breast is perfect for crumb chicken and it actually comes out really juicy and tender with the way that we prepare it. 
and I'm going to cut through them lengthways in half because if we were to use a full whole chicken breast, our ch crumb chicken would be about this big. It would be massive, it wouldn't fit, fit in my fry pan. So get a sharp knife and then cut through the middle of the chicken. And I just like to pick that part of the chicken up, the top part, and then I let the knife work through it, which my knife probably needs a bit of sharpening here. Until you've got two perfect little pieces. I'm just gonna put those to the side and I'm gonna repeat that with this one. I've got some glad wrap here and I'm going to lay it out onto my chopping board. Pop my chicken into it, well onto it, and then get another layer. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna pound that chicken <laughs> or I'm gonna mallet it with the smooth side of a mallet. And what the glad wrap is doing is protecting the chicken from breaking from the malleting. Otherwise you might get holes and tears in it, which isn't gonna be great for our crumb chicken. Starting from the center outwards, you wanna mallet it until it's even throughout in terms of thickness. That's just gonna allow our chicken to cook at an even rate throughout all parts of the chicken. I'm gonna take that off and that's looking really good to me. So it's about, yeah, about two centimeters thick and you'll see that it's even throughout. So that, that risen bit in the middle, the chunky bit has just been pounded out. So we've got a beautiful even piece of chicken breast. And I'm gonna repeat that with all of these other ones that we've cut up and you can just keep using the same glad wrap for that. You don't need to keep replacing it over and over. That's all our chicken malleted. And the reason I've laid it out onto a platter like this is because I wanna season it with salt and pepper. Always season your meat with salt and pepper. It's very important. Otherwise it's gonna taste very bland and not have any flavor at all. All right, our crumbing station, our chicken is ready. And now for the fun part, we're gonna crumb that chicken. I've popped my apron on because things are gonna get a little bit messy now. We're gonna flour the chicken, pop it in the egg wash, and then crumb it. And people do do a double crumb sometimes, which means they go flour, egg, crumbs, eggs, crumbs. But we don't need that with this because those bread crumbs are so chunky and delicious. So we're gonna grab a piece of chicken. And I've also got two baking trays set up and that's what I'm gonna put my crumb chicken on too. So just a light flour on each side of the chicken. And a little trick when crumbing anything from meat to vegetables is to have one hand for dry ingredients and one hand for wet. I always mess it up because I like using two hands, but if you can do that, it does make your life a little bit easier. So just give that chicken a little bit of a shake. Now we're gonna to to switch hands because we're using wet. Put it into that garlic egg wash and you'll see like there's some really beautiful chunks of garlic that are getting onto there and just they create such a beautiful taste when you bite into it. Shake it off. Now into the breadcrumbs. Alright, I've got to remember, go back to my dry and I just sprinkle it on top and then apply quite a bit of pressure because you really want those breadcrumbs to stick down. Give it a bit of a shake, but look at that. Look at those chunky, crusty parts on there. They are just gonna be so good when we fry this up. And I'm gonna put it on my baking tray and repeat. So just getting those final bits of breadcrumbs on there. You'll see that I totally went against my rules of one hand for dry ingredients, one hand for wet. Okay, that's our last bit. So I'm gonna put him on the tray and look at all of that beautiful crumb chicken. And how great is that green color? I just love it. It always reminds me of home. I've never seen anyone's breadcrumbs look like this before. So they only need to go into the fridge for about 30 minutes, even less, and they don't need to be covered either. And I am going to fry my chicken in, oh, controversial olive oil. Now this is a shallow fry. It's perfectly fine to use olive oil at a high temperature like this. So I'm just gonna mix that a little bit with a neutral oil because it isn't a light olive oil. And as I said, it would just be a little bit too heavy. 
Just grabbing a wooden skewer because the best way to check if your oil is hot enough to fry in is either you can pop a little bit of bread in there and see if it sizzles or I like to use a wooden skewer and if bubbles form around the bottom then we're ready to go. Yep, we are getting some good bubbles form around there. It is a bit of going back and forth to get that right temperature of the oil. But yeah, those bubbles forming around, that's looking really good to me. And that sound, I'll be quiet, but that is a perfect sound. That means we are getting a good crumb on that other side. I'm gonna say roughly two to three minutes per side. But again, as I said, it's really hard to give an exact time on how long to fry each side of the chicken. So that's why I always recommend starting with a two to three minute mark, but testing it out, seeing how it cooks. I know people get a bit freaked out when cooking with raw chicken, but there's also a bit of a trick when cooking this is that you wanna take it off the heat before it has fully cooked, because it's gonna to continue to cook when it's off and out of the oil and just cooling on the cooling rack. Now you can, I did get a spoon because you can base the hot oil on top in some parts that haven't browned as best as others. And you'll see that beautiful parsley and rosemary throughout. It hasn't burnt. It's just perfect. All right, that's looking good to me. So I'm just gonna take it off and I've got a cooling rack that I've prepared here with a bit of absorbent paper under it. So just leave that to sit there for about two to three minutes to rest before we cut into it. And that'll just make sure that that bread comes up extra crispy as well. There is that beautiful crispy crumb chicken that was made with those homemade breadcrumbs. You can see the parsley and the rosemary and that chunky breadcrumb throughout. It's just so good. And it's got that beautiful golden yellow color from the extra virgin olive oil that we fried it in. And just listen to how crispy it is. Ooh. All right, I'm gonna cut it up. Look at that. It's so yummy. Oh, and I can smell the garlic and I can smell the rosemary. I am so hungry. My stomach is grumbling. But because this is my mom's famous recipe, I'm gonna bring my mom in to enjoy our favorite meal together. Mom. <laughs> Here I am. This is my mom, Annie. Hello. Say hello. Hello. We will look. This one. You're to look at this one. Hello. <laughs> so what do you think? How did I do cooking the chicken? Mm, it looks beautiful. Yeah, it looks like yours. Yeah, it's just like mama's. So like, as I said, you can eat this crumb chicken any way that you like with a simple salad, turn it into a crispy crumb chicken burger, turn it into a chicken parma, but mom and I like eating it just on its own and with surprisingly a little bit of sweet chili. You honestly cannot beat this combination. All right, mom, let's grab a piece. I'll grab a big one. Yeah, I'm gonna grab a big one too. Dip it in. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> We've done well. This is so good. How good are those chunky breadcrumb parts mm. as well? Mm, they're beautiful. Like a little crouton in every bite and if you're frying up some bread, you want that crouton texture. If you liked this recipe, please follow and subscribe. And you can even get this one in my new cookbook, Garlic, Olive Oil and Everything Else, which you can order through my website, daneskitchen.com. I'd love to see you make this recipe, so please tag me in any photos where you make it. I can't wait to see you all make them at home.